Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and welcome back to yet another super cool, super awesome, and absolutely amazing lecture number four on Phylum Platy Helminthus and Ash Helminthus. That is in today's class we would be discussing about the Platy Helminthus, which is actually the flat worms, and Ash Helminthus, which is actually the round worm. So these two topics would be taught in today's class. That is lecture number four of Animal Kingdom. So let's get going. This is an amazing Telegram group. T.me slash neat underscore biopoint where daily session updates, regular discussion, polls, quizzes and mentor doubt clearance takes place. So those who are brand new to the channel, don't forget to join our Telegram group at T.me slash neat underscore biopoint. Those who are watching the session right now, don't forget to hit the like button, do share it with your friends and subscribe the amazing platform for more lectures on bio need. So let's get going with this first phylum, that is the phylum Platy Helminthus. Platy Helminthus, phylum Platy Helminthus is also known as flatworms because they have a dorsal ventrally flattened body surface. They have a dorsal ventrally flattened body surface. That is why they are called flatworms or platy helminthus. So, as we were discussing right from the beginning, phylum porifera have cellular level of organization. Phylum celenderata have tissue level of organization. Tenophora have tissue level of organization. And now, finally, platy helminthus, phylum platy helminthus have organ level of organization at certain cases only very rare cases only we'll use this organ system but generally we use the term organ level of organization in your ncrt also it is mentioned organ level of organization only so you can give prior importance to organ level of organization only okay don't give importance to this organ system so if a question comes, what is the level of organization which is seen in platy helminthus? The answer goes for organ level of organization. Examples of platy helminthus is tapeworm, which actually resides inside our intestine. Planaria, which have the property of true regeneration. Right? Planaria have the capability for true regeneration, which we have already discussed. Right, true regeneration is possessed by planaria. So, they show organ level of organization. Examples are tapeworm, planaria, liver fluke, etc. The symmetry is bilateral symmetry. So, you can, you can expect a question. Bilateral symmetry is first observed in which phylum? Bilateral symmetry is first observed in which phylum? It is flatworms or platy helminthus phylum platy helminthus bilateral symmetry means this organism can be divided into two organism that is two parts it can be divided into two different parts through a single plane you cannot divide this organism like this into two different or equal parts if you divide the organisms in this particular plane only you will get the organism as two different planes. Look, this actually, this glass is actually dividing it into two equal parts in opposite direction. Exactly. Here also you can divide this organism in two different direction or two equal parts. Germinal layers, platy helminthus are triploblastic organism. That is, they have three germinal layers, outer ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. But these platy helminthus, they have acelomate. They do not have the presence of coelom. So they are acelomate. So sometimes a question may be coming for the exam. Name the diploblast, name the triploblastic acelomate phylum. Name the triploblastic, name the triploblastic acelomate phylum. It is phylum platy helminthus. Okay, look, their body outer, they are covered by ectoderm, middle, they have mesoderm, and inner part, they have the endoderm. If you are cutting this organism, this is how you find the three germ layers. If you cut the organism into two equal parts, you will get a part like this. So in that part, you will have three different layers, that is endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. 
So remember the question which you can expect that is a uh, name a triploblastic acylomate phylum or which among the following is an example for a triploblastic acylomate organism. It can be either planaria, it can be tapeworm or it can be one more example given in your NCRT that is the liver fluke. Yes. They are acylomate organism. They are acylomate organism. That is no coelom. They do not have no coelom is present. Okay, planaria is having an acylomate condition. All the platyhelminthes are having an acylomate condition. Is it clear? Is it clear? So once again, I'm repeating the examples. That is, uh, platyhelminthes is having an organ level of organization they show bilateral symmetry they show bilateral symmetry they are triploblastic in nature they are triploblastic in nature they are acylomate organism and their examples is tapeworm liver fluke tapeworm liver fluke and the organism which have the true regeneration capacity that is the planaria so these are the examples clear next is a habitat and habitat they are mainly aquatic mainly platyhelminthes they are aquatic but certain they can act as endoparasite what do you mean by endoparasite there are two types of parasites that is first one is endoparasite second one is ectoparasite ecto means what outside the body ectoderm outside layer and endo means the inner layer or inside our body. So endoparasite, the tapeworm actually resides inside the intestine of human beings. Okay, so this is also all our parasites. Some are free living, some are par uh, or some are free living also. You can exit, you can see some are free living. For example, planaria is free living. Almost all the platyhelminthes they are parasite, which may either be endoparasites or ectoparasites okay endo means inside for example this tapeworm is residing inside our intestine right so as a result what this tapeworm is an endoparasite the tapeworm is an example for an endoparasite so in this diagram you can see the bilateral symmetry look this is the same way how you can cut okay you'll get one part like a part of a concave lens, sorry, a convex lens. The other part also you will get it exactly like the same. So if you make this two join, you will get what this organism, which is the liver fluke. Exactly like that in planaria also, you can divide like this. You can divide like this. This all, they can undergo regeneration. The whole organism can undergo regeneration. If you cut the organism into two equal halves, suppose you cut this organism into two equal halves. Oh my God. Okay, two equal parts. Each part have the capability, each part have the capability to form new organism. Each part have the capability to form new organism. Is it clear? So, they have a property of regeneration. They have a property of regeneration. They are endoparasite. They are free living. Next is the digestive system. The digestive system of platyhelminthes is incomplete. So you will see incomplete digestive system as we have already discussed. This serves, this particular opening serves as both the mouth and the anus. Okay. So there is only a single opening which acts as a mouth and anus. It is a single opening. That is, they have incomplete digestive system. The single opening will serve as both mouth and anus. That is why you will ingest the food. You'll ingest the food through one opening. Through the same opening, the ejected food or the excretion material will also come out. That's why you will call the digestive system as incomplete digestive system there is no respiratory system present but excretion takes place with the help of a particular kind of cells which is known as the flame cells 
Okay, all have to take it down. Flame cells are the organ of excretion. The organ of excretion of platyhelminthes. Very important. Previous year neat MCQ. So respiratory system is absent. Circulatory system is absent. Reproduction is by asexual. That is by fragmentation. Sexual means are also seen. That is they have a testis. They have an ovary. That is why in certain case I told you, right? You will be given like they have organ system level of organization also. So here in reproduction, they have testis. They have ovaries. That is why you will call them. Okay, they are hermaphrodite. They are internal fertilization. Development is indirect. Many larval stages are there. Okay, many larval stages are there. That is why their development is called indirect. Okay. So asexual is by fragmentation, then sexual reproduction is there. Hermaphrodite, internal fertilization, development is indirect and through many larval stages. Then we are going to discuss about their, some of their unique features. The most important feature, their body is unsegmented. I already told you metamerism is found in arthropoda, annelida and chordata. Segmentation is found in three different phylum that is the annelida arthropoda and chordata okay annelida arthropoda and chordata very important feature they have a dorsal ventrally flattened body except tapeworm look they are dorsal ventrally flattened they are flattened okay so they have they are unsegmented worms and they have dorsal ventrally flattened body. One of the other unique feature is the presence of a flame cell, or it is known as photo sorry protonephridia. Protonephridia. Okay, guys, this is a flame cell. This flame cell act as the organ for excretion. Okay, flame cell, otherwise known as what? Protonephridia. Nephridia is actually an organ of excretion in earthworm. Protonephridia is an organ of excretion in platyhelminthes. So the same organ of excretion maintains osmoregulation. So this flame cell also helps in the process of osmoregulation. Also helps in the process of osmoregulation. Okay, everyone. Next is the unique features. What are the unique features of platyhelminthes? What are the different unique features of platyhelminthes? One second. Yes. That is, since they are parasitic form, they have hooks and suckers. If you have any doubt, you can ask me here or you can come to the telegram and ask me. I'll definitely explain. Okay, they have hooks is there. They have suckers since they are parasitic forms. This helps in the absorption of nutrients from the host through the body surface. Hooks means they can cling to the surface of any organism or any substances or substrates. Suckers, they help in the, what? Suction of different nutrients or food that they need. So these two are the unique features. So three unique features, three to four unique feature we studied that is they are unsegmented. They have a dorsal ventrally flattened body. They have a dorsal ventrally flattened body. Third one, they are flame cells or protonephridia for excretion. Fourth one, they have hooks and suckers since they have parasitic forms. They have specialized structures called hooks and suckers. The example given in the NCRT is Tania solium, tapeworm, fasciola, which is a liver fluke, and planaria, which have a true regeneration capacity. These are the three different examples 
which I mentioned. Tania solium is a tapeworm. So let's have a quick recap on what we have learned so far. That is, one second, yes. They show organ or organ system level of organization. They show bilateral symmetry. They show triploblastic level of organization. They are acelomate organism. They are mostly aquatic. They are endoparasite. Some are free living. They have an incomplete digestive system. That is only a single opening is present. Their respiratory system is absent. Their circulatory system is absent. Then they have asexual reproduction by fragmentation and they also show sexual reproduction. Okay. They are hermaphrodite animals with internal fertilization and indirect development. Indirect development means there are a lot of larval stages. Okay, they are unsegmented worms. They are unsegmented worms. Dorso ventrally flattened body. They are unsegmented worms with dorso ventrally flattened body except tapeworm. Their excretion is by the flame cells, which is also known as protonephridia. They are flame cells or otherwise, they are known as protonephridia. They have hooks and suckers for absorbing the nutrients. And the example, very, very important, Tania, Solium, Fistiola, and Planaria. So these are some of the important points which you have to learn in this chapter. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So that's all about phylum platyhelminthus. That's all about the phylum platyhelminthus. Next is phylum ashelminthus or the roundworm. Okay, let's discuss it in detail. The first and the foremost important, I told you in the first class itself, that is after studying the basics of classification, the rest of all the topics would seem to be easier because we have all the things the first six properties are similar to the basic of classification there and then and there itself i told you the examples also for that so if we are very much clear about those topics that is the basics of classification that is which shows cellular which shows bilateral symmetry which shows radial symmetry all those things it would be very very clear that you can easily write it down the properties or the features of the respective phylums as follows. And there is only one important thing which you have to study is that you have to study details about the, uh, even if, if uh, there is some specialized cells or any structures or organs for performing special functions and also about the unique features. So in this case, you have to study about organ system level of organization. So name the phylum where you can first observe organ system level of organization if the option does not contain platy helminthus, then definitely you have to go with ash helminthus itself. They show organ system level of organization. Example is the hookworm and ascaris. Ascaris is also is a part of our intestine. It resides inside the intestine. Look at the difference between a male and a female ascaris. Male ascaris is shorter, whereas female ascaris is longer. Okay, so two features. First one is the males are shorter, females are longer. Second one, the tip of the male ascaris is curled, curved. Okay, curled in curves. Well, as in female, it is straight and long. Clear? They show bilateral symmetry. They show bilateral symmetry. One of the important features about coelom we studied, that is an important frequently repeated question that is, Ash Elminders, they are pseudo coelomate. Look. Guys, I'll zoom it for you. Look, this is a filarial worm causing filariasis. Exactly. Like, look this. Lower, lower, which is the eye worm. You might have also seen in certain people. Inside the eyes, you will have lower, lower, which is the eye worm, which is present inside the human eye. Sometimes in certain people, 
when we are speaking and all with the people, what happens? You might see a small worm may be present inside their eyes, which is actually harmful. Okay, that is a loa loa, which is an eye worm. Next is a germinal layer, which is a triploblastic. That is, they have an outer ectoderm, they have a middle mesoderm, and an inner endoderm. So for your exams and all, if this kind of a question come, you can draw this diagram because easily you can understand this diagram. Okay. They are pseudo coelomate or false coelom is present. They do not have a well-defined coelom. They have a false coelom present. They are aquatic. They are aquatic as well as terrestrial inside our body. Look, this is our intestine. This is our intestine and ascaris reside inside the intestine. There's all free living. Aquatic free living, you don't have to study these examples, they are not mentioned in your NCRT textbook. You have to study examples that is Ascaris, Hookworm, Pinworm. Only these three examples. If you have to study something else, I'll tell you no need to study these scientific names, unnecessary names which would actually confuse you. So they may be either free living or parasitic. They have a complete digestive system. Very, very important statement. A uh, phylum in which complete digestive system is first observed. It is in ash almendus. Tubular elementary canal with well-developed muscular pharynx. So, characteristic feature of phylum ash almendus. Well-developed muscular pharynx. Knee 2018 previous year question. Knee 2018 previous year MCQ question. Well developed muscular pharynx is the characteristic feature of phylum ash helminthus. But respiratory system is absent, circulatory system is absent. Reproduction is dioecious, that is, sexes are separate. We saw in Ascaris, we show like long as the long as the female. And short curved is the male. Right? Short curved is the male. So they show sexual reproduction with internal fertilization. Their development may be direct or indirect. That is, either their development can be without larval formation or they can be with larval formation. Body is circular in cross section. Syncytial epidermis. What do you mean by syncytium, guys? I'll tell you what is syncytium. That is a new term which you will come across. Syncytium. Syncytium means just imagine this is a cell. Okay, I'll draw that. Okay, I'll draw that. Yes, syncytion. Just imagine this. Just imagine. That is, this is a cell. Okay, this is a cell. In this cell, actually you have a nucleus. So let me draw that too. You have a nucleus. Okay. This nucleus is actually going to divide. Okay. So that is actually first of all going to form two. And then what you can see. Then you can see that the cytoplasm of the cell divides into two. Finally, it leads to two daughter cells. Right. But in certain cases, in certain cases, what you can see is that In certain cases, you can observe as what? A particular cell will not divide. Okay? That cell won't divide. That is, in one particular cell itself, you would have more than one nucleus. So, if more than one nucleus, 
is present in a single cell. Such a condition is known as syncytion. Guys, this all, this is everything is single cell. Okay, this is one cell. This is next cell. This is another cell. This is another cell. You imagine like that. So if in a cell itself more than one nucleus are present, such organisms, you will call them as syncytion. Such a condition, you will actually call them as what? Syncytion. And they have a thick cuticle. Unique feature is an excretory tube to remove body waste through the excretory pore. Important feature which helps you to distinguish, they show sexual dimorphism. What do you mean by sexual dimorphism? It is a morphological difference between a male and a female. You cannot distinguish between a male and a female, a uh, poriferin or a sponge, hydra or whatever. Okay, but in case of Ascaris, by viewing it itself, you can distinguish between the two because in males, the curve, you will have the curved end. Look, the end of the males is curved. But in females, the end is long. Look, the end is long. Okay, and one more important feature, females are longer. Females are longer than the males. These two features you can use to distinguish. Example in your textbook, that is the ascaris, which is a round worm. This you can see in your laboratory, in your school. Hookworm, anklycostoma is the hookworm. And filarial worm, bucheraria, filarial worm. You'll also call them as elephantiasis, elephantiasis. Filarial one. So what are the different features? Organ system level of organization, bilateral symmetry, triploblastic, pseudocoelomate, aquatic and terrestrial, complete digestive system, respiratory and circulatory system are absent, diaceous, direct or indirect development, syncytial epidermis, thick cuticle, import, important feature, muscular pharynx. Well-developed muscular pharynx, ascaris, and glycosoma, future area. Very, very important. And that's all for today's. In the next class, we would continue with the earthworm, segmented worm, that is a rings, ringed worm, that is a phylum analyta. So that's all for today's class. Bye-bye, guys. See you in the next class. If you have any doubt, please just don't forget to ask. Bye.